Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a show that we did so long ago, and it was me and Eddie. We were doing it with The Walking Dead, but, you know, I thought, you know, Sammy wanted to talk about this show, and then he got me hooked on it, and now I kind of want to talk about the show. But this is a show that we're bringing back Reviving called The Breakdown. Uh, the Breakdown. The Breakdown. <laughs> um, here on The Breakdown, you know, for this first couple of weeks, we're going to cover uh, Lovecraft, Lovecraft uh, Country, and... As the breakdown goes on, if we find any uh, horror-related shows or horror movies, we will bring it on to the breakdown and talk about them. Uh, this week's episode, we're going to be talking about uh, episodes one and two of Lovecraft. Uh, count- I can. Why can't I? Why is that name country. always always so? I, I don't know why I call I it. Like everyone wants to say county. Yeah. Everyone wants to say county. Everybody wants to say county. And I can tell you what our next show is going to be. What's our next show going to be? They're, they're oh, I know. Is it because of the poster that got released today? Yes, sir. All right. I know which one you're talking about, and we'll save that for when we get closer to it. Uh, I, yeah. I feel like by the time we wrap up this this uh, this show, that that show will uh, come out. And of course, we're talking about a haunting of Bly Manor. Yes, because so, if you know anything, Sam loves a haunting of Hill House. I can I can already see how that's. Tony totally liked it. Too. I liked it too. I loved it, and I heard Bly Manor is supposed to be even scarier. So, um, I don't even think we're ready for that. I don't even think you're ready for that. I'm willing to watch one episode in the dark by myself and film it. Yeah, I, I that, and that's the thing we're gonna have to we're gonna have to work on that is like we can watch them all, or we can watch an episode, film an episode of the breakdown, and then watch another episode, film another episode of the breakdown. It's gonna be kind of hard because with Netflix, like everything comes out at once usually. So yeah, most of the times, I mean, I know there's a couple shows I do weekly, but um, we'll see. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, Maybe we'll have to add New Mutants to that list, only because it is considered a horror movie. Yeah, it depends what I see it though. Yeah, so you know, I have a lot to I'll have a lot to say about that movie. I've been waiting fucking yeah, years. I'm gonna say all the things of negative. Well, we all want the original cut today. Um, the new cut wasn't what um, the director had in mind, so we need a four hour cut of this Jesus. movie. Like, hey, this don't talk movie. shit about the Snyder cut. How dare you? Leave the Snyder cut out of this. Um, but nonetheless, we're going to talk a little bit today about, uh, Lovecraft Country. Uh, very, very good show, man. Uh, Jordan Peele, uh, J.J. Abrams, executive producers of the show. Um, and, yeah. you, and you shouldn't expect less from these two. I mean, one of them is currently on his way to becoming the new, t- the new king of horror, and the other one has been taking the sci-fi game for so long. And they do yeah. blend both sci-fi and horror very, very well in this, uh, show. Um, right off the bat... Uh, let, let, yeah, right, like right off the bat, we'll just jump into it. But so we're gonna start with episode one, then we'll make our way to episode two. We won't try to make them too long. We're just gonna really explain like the main plot details and, um, of course, a lot of the uh, things that are going on. So heavy spoilers. If you guys are planning on watching the show, go watch the show, then come back and watch our version of the breakdown yeah. of this. Um, very good. Um, I did take a little bit. Of, I didn't take notes for the second episode because I knew that one was gonna be more embedded embedded into my head than. The uh, first one, however, I did take a little bit of notes for the first episode because there's a couple things I want to touch upon. But, uh, Sammy, be- while I pull that up, go ahead and just give your thoughts of what you've been thinking so far of these uh, first two episodes, man. Yeah, definitely. I thought these first two episodes were impeccable. Just the way that they not only bring Lovecraft's works to life, but make you enjoy these characters. Um and presented in like a 1960s America, post Vietnam, where there's still like animosity between the races. So you have that playing into it a lot. You also have just a lot of just craziness happening and just gut wrenching, edge of your seat moments throughout, which have been super interesting. And just the sci fi fantasy aspect to the show has been ridiculous over these first two episodes. And then, not to mention, the ending of episode two, just straight what? How? Like, what? Uh, there's so much going on. But I think, look, it really, like, if you can get through the first 10 minutes of the show, I think you're ready for this for this show. Because you it begins super weird. You're like, what's happening with this whole Cthulhu, like, He's at war, but then there's like aliens, and so, and then it kind of goes 
to the bus scene. But so like, you have to just be prepared to 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 pay attention. I think I think that's what's very important. Right, and as uh, I was, it's not one of those shows you can kind of like leisurely watch. You actually have to, yeah, enjoy to enjoy the full aspect of it. You have to actually look and think like beyond what's on the screen. Right, and you know, and I and I and I completely come get where you're coming from too, because there's a, like you said, the first ten minutes that I will be honest are a little slow, but if you really pay attention to the the plot of the story and everything, he's really there's a bigger a bigger uh, plot than we're actually than you see. Not until like maybe end of episode one, starting episode two, you start getting to uncover more of that plot. But essentially, um, of course, I want to talk about that first like five ten minutes of the of the show, which is phenomenal. So uh, if you're paying attention, the guy's doing commentary. He said it's, it actually takes place. It's a dream it's supposed to be in like 1928. So we're looking at like World War One here, um, and we see explosions. We see a lot of people fighting. You think it's the standard of just war? You just think it's war? It's in black and white. It looks like one of those like old style 30s 20s film or 30s films where it was just black and white something that you may have probably seen in the theater back in the day like during the world war ii era where they would show you black and white footage of what's going on with the war and what's going on and how you can enlist and all that it looked it kind of gave me those vibes maybe some like indiana jones type vibes where like you know if you if you ever been on that ride in the line queue they have that like black and white uh safety video that they always show so it kind of gave me those kind of vibes um and then we cut to the battlefield and that's when you just see like this is not standard war like there's more to it than a war going on they, you know you got looks like you have some nods to war of the worlds over there with those alien pods walking around i saw a lot of nods to that um the ufos just look beautiful and i like how it goes from like black and white to like when the explosion happens like the first time you see it like you see the color of the fire and then when you go onto yeah. the actual battlefield you start seeing color everywhere which is really cool um and then of course you see uh, a giant flying creature freaking just fly in the air and at first you know you, you, you just think what the hell is that thing and then when you get a close-up view of it it's actually cthulhu which is uh one of the seven princes of hell uh which i think has always been a, a, a great mythological creature to touch on hp lovecraft is actually famous for touching on this creature the most he really brought it into light when he made these books back in like the 1800 like late 1800s to early 1900s was when he was in his prime um and he was the one that really brought cthulhu to the scene but you're seeing all these aliens, you're seeing Cthulhu. One missable detail that you really got to pay attention from one and two is uh, the alien that falls down in the beginning scene of the, the first episode. Pay attention to that girl because he sees that girl again in episode two and he fights her, the main character. I think his name is, what was his name? Charlie is the main character. I forget his name. I'll IMDb. I'll do an IMDb oh. search. IMDb search. Oh, wait. So she's in episode one i didn't catch that yeah that's a missable detail that you really got to pay attention to the the um the asian lady who's played by i think jamie i think her name is jamie chung don't quote me on that she was in the one Sucker from Punch. the this the i mean it doesn't matter we can spoil whatever the hell like the mythical like in their head scenes right yes um which we'll get to later when we talk a little bit more about it episode two um but that was the alien that he saw in his dream that came down from the flying saucer. She was all painted and everything. Um, and I thought that was cool that she made another appearance in um, episode two. Episode two, right, yeah. And uh, the main character, I'm sorry if I get this right, is uh, Atticus Freeman, I believe his name is. Um, yeah, yeah, no, I know his last name is Mr. Freeman. Yeah, so his first name is Atticus. Um, yeah. And he's having this dream and he, and he like falls in love with this alien. And then Cthulhu comes right in front of them, and it was funny when Jackie Robinson stepped in because that really tied in that whole era of what era we're in. And uh, if you really pay attention to the narrator, it always said, like, when boys are dreaming, they always dream about baseball. And that was when Jackie Robinson came and just, like, split Cthulhu in half. But then when you thought that was it, Cthulhu actually rises up again, comes back together, and right as he's about to kill them, like he, uh, Jackie Robinson is about to hit him again, and then the guy wakes up onto the bus. Um, a lot of things that I did like that they touched about too on this too is, um, of course, with everything going on in the world right now, uh, this was a very great uh, way to show how racism was back in the day, um, and how how that shines and how that reflects on today. Uh, this thing heavily covers racism because this is the time of the '60s where the civil rights movement was going on. Um, and, you know, we were still, you know, America was still just that way. 
sadly. Uh, but they really do touch on that, and I think the actors do a great job of bringing that that feeling to life because it gives you a feeling of uncomfortable. Uh, makes you feel uncomfortable at some points. You know what I mean? No, I definitely agree that they definitely really do spill into that, especially in episode one. Right. Um, and then a little more subtly in episode two. Yeah. But like, even if you listen to the music in episode one, a lot of the music with the white people is very just like happy, like cheery, yeah. like life is but a breathe. I think it's playing in one of the scenes. Right. Um, and it's just like, well, no, it's not. I mean, you just watch like at the bus scene, for example, after he wakes up and, um, there's a lady in him, the other African American lady. Right. And it's just there, like everyone else gets to hop in the truck and like cause the bus breaks down and drive away. And they're like, Well, let me get your bag, because we're about to walk a long way. Yeah. Like And there was another notable scene too, uh, going back to that civil rights movement talk, uh, especially with the whole bus. Like there's a scene where they actually show like it says, uh, colored people in the back. Like that was a huge thing which really sparked yeah. the civil rights movement. Um back in the 60s. So I'm really liking the direction they're taking this and bringing that to light today. I mean, I think it's a very a positive thing to inform and educate people who are not really aware of those times and how it was that this is what it used to be like. Um, and we're seeing that with these characters. However, there's more of a conflict other than the racism in this, which is, um, of course, our, our main character is going back to his hometown in Chicago to find out what happened to his dad. Now, in the whole first episode, all we hear is, you know, this guy just picked up your dad in this nice-ass car, and they just left, and, uh, you know, he left me a note. Uh, when, when him and his uncle read the note, none of it makes sense. It doesn't sound like the dad's writing. You know, there's a lot of uh, details that kind of are just kind of leading you to the point of, like, okay, what's really going on in this story? Like, what really yeah. happened to the dad? Well, also, the, another thing that's really interesting, I think, too, is the, the job of the uncle. Right. Uh, he literally goes city to city, driving around, trying to get a guide for, you know, those people that identify as black or African-American. Right. So that they're able to know where they're able to eat, where they're able to sleep, if they should drive to this city, what kind can they go through that city, et cetera. Which really, because of his knowledge, helps him a little bit later. Right. But also kind of screws him a little bit later. Right. Um, but I, I thought that was interesting. And I, and I like how they set you up like with this whole story of for Atticus of this familial issues is we learn um, doesn't know where his dad is and his journey is I'm supposed to go find my dad because he's chasing after what's rightfully ours yeah um, um, which we obviously we learned more about in episode two. Right. And in episode one and two, our main characters we're seeing is, uh, of course, Atticus. Uh, we had uh, Letty, who is uh, uh, it was a friend of Atticus's growing up. She was like the only you find out she was the only female in the science fiction uh, horror mo uh, book club that they had when they grew up in Chicago. Um, and then, of course, Uncle George Freeman, who is more of a dad to Atticus than you find out his actual dad, whose uh, name is uh, Montrose Freeman. Um, and we'll get into that later because there's a lot of stuff that happens with the uncle in, in episode two that you're just kind of like you feel for Ad, uh, Ad, Atticus, but he's more of a, you, you're seeing him be more of a father figure for uh, Atticus than his actual dad ever really was. I mean, when he first encounters his dad in episode two, which again we'll talk about later, but he just kind of treats him like shit and he just doesn't, you know, he just yells at him and stuff. And it's just like with with George, it's like you're seeing as they're doing the road trip in episode one of how much they bond and how much all the stuff they go through and, and how, how much together they stay with each other, you know, and, you know, the advice he gives them as they're going to the road trip. So it, it's it's definitely, I, I really did like that relationship in episode one and two between Atticus and George. I really thought that that was a, a solid relationship between the two. Uh, you don't get to see a lot of um, relationships like that in, in modern day cinema or anything. So I liked the relationship between George and Atticus. That was a really, I think that was a, it's a big plot uh, thing in the first two episodes. Yeah, and I think another big plot thing, I think overall, is the whole family issues because Le Leticia, or however you pronounce her name, Letty, Letty. Um, she has, she, her mother died. Right. Uh, you learn later on in episode one that, like, her brother's not over that. Her sister's not over that. Right. Um, and she made some mistakes along the way. So I really think, I think that's going to be, like, a, a common theme that we can see going forward is 
the repercussions of family issues. Right. If they go uncured. Uh, right. Um, but even um, <clears throat> what I want to see more of is the um, Miss uh, George Freeman's daughter um, with her comic books and stuff. I really right. want to see how those kind of play out. Yeah. Apparently, every time he goes on a trip, she gives him something. I believe it, her name was uh, Diana. Yeah. Played by Jada Harris. Yeah. Um, I, Which another, is really cool. Speaking of the daughter, another funny scene that I thought was uh, funny was when, when uh, Atticus comes back home. The you, you know George and his wife just woke up and they're fooling around and thing and the, the mom says like you know these walls are thick you know she's in the next room she can hear us and <laughs> we cut to the daughter and, and they're like fooling around in the room and then the daughter's like oh that's gross and then she goes into the other room and Atticus comes up through the, through the window and scares her and surprises her she starts screaming but then they all reunite as a family you know that really shows that how close this family is and that really shows yeah. how this relationship's going to affect the series yeah i'm really interested in how they tied them back in because right. um you know what's her hippolyte i believe that's her name is the wife i think so. Um, check. yeah how, how is she gonna what is what's gonna be the repercussions of the ending of episode two right i mean and we're gonna get to that because there's actually scenes in episode two that bring her back in and bring in some relationship things that we were kind of seen a little bit maybe hinting at between uh, uh lita and um uh At- At- atticus but uh it it's it's gonna be uh interesting when we talk about those but um mm-hmm. I, I what i found big about this is uh and i and i talked to you about this a little bit i texted you last night about this that this show feels like uh castle rock now castle rock was of yeah. course for those who don't know uh, Castle Rock was a show based around Stephen King's work. It wasn't a, a specific book, book in general. What they did is basically took all of Stephen King's work and put it into one universe. Uh, the first season, of course, is with um, what's it? Who played Pennywise in uh, the new It movie? Do you remember his name? Bill Skarsgård. Oh, yeah, Skarsgård. Yeah, Bill Skarsgård. So he is like this mysterious character who's locked up in Shawshank, which Shawshank Redemption. Uh, part of Stephen King's universe. He's locked up in Shawshank. He's this mysterious guy that kind of came out of nowhere, and you find out he's more to, like, he. there's more to him than what you see. Uh, you're starting to see other things. I mean, at the very end of season one, like in the post credit scene, they hinted at uh, one of the main characters in the show being a relative to Jack Torrance from The Shining, which I thought was a really cool thing. It was like his, that was like her uncle. Uh, but, Anyway, I, the reason why I bring up Castle Rock is because what I'm seeing with uh, Lovecraft Country is this is supposed to be uh, like an H.P. Lovecraft version of that. I mean, they obviously acknowledge H.P. Lovecraft, and a lot of his works are always mentioned in these um, in, in this in these in this series. But much like uh, you know Castle Rock, this is kind of tying in a lot of his novels and a lot of his stories into a universe where only the, the only difference is in this case H.P. Lovecraft is acknowledged and he is in this universe, an author rather than in the, you know, Castle Rock, Stephen King's work, you know, is in one universe, but they never acknowledge like, Oh, this is the work of Stephen King. You know, it's like, it's just all in one universe. So I, I did like that kind of direction that this show is going. Cause I really was a fan of Castle Rock. So. Yeah, definitely. And I think back to the, back to the show here <clears throat> with Lovecraft um, is I enjoyed the road trip. I thought the road trip was very informative. Obviously, right. <clears throat> Uh, George comes along the way because he's like, well, Atticus, you want to go find your dad. I don't want you to go alone. Um, Letty's like, well, I guess I'll go too. Like, I She's kind of homeless. Here. That's kind of established in the first episode. Yeah. Like she's trying to find yeah. a place to live. I have nowhere to go, so let me figure this out with you guys. Right. Um, cool, man. And then uh, they go along the way and like they go like, okay, well, we're on our way here. Um, let's go make a stop. Right. Um, this place is. I heard rumors that this place, this restaurant, serves colored people. We can go eat there, and they get there, and they really get to experience the racism, the hate, of, yeah. the hate of white, which I really thought was interesting. Um, and I think it really shows. Uh, I mean, outside of showing the race race issues in America at that point, I think it does play another another reason. As you get a better glimpse into the Atticus George relationship, right. Um, because they're sitting there and George is like, Hey, tell me why 
the White House is a White House. And then he's like, well, because they burned it down. And the way to cover the burn marks was to paint it white. And he's like, exactly. That's fine. We got to go. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, that was a very intense scene, too, because, you know, they walk into the diner and they're, they're looked at like funny. And then, of course, like even Letty was like, should we even be here? Like, I don't feel comfortable being here. She's trying to talk to them out of it. Uh, and they're like, no, nah, nonsense. We're, we're okay. George is like, no, nah, we'll be okay. You know, let's just order some food. Let's get some coffee. And... Yeah, our money spends the same. Yeah. It's like Letty's like, I don't think we belong here. And fucking when, you know, the guy comes and takes the order, you just hear cop sirens. And Letty's like, we got to get the hell out of here. <laughs> and, like, they just get in their car and leave. And that's when the townsfolk come with, like, guns and trying to shoot at them. Uh, it's established that that town doesn't take kind to strangers, obviously. Yeah. Um, of course, yeah. I mean... I would say strangers overall, but of course, people of color would be a lot worse for them because of how racist that town sounded. Um, I, but I, the, the, obviously, another key purpose is the the save, right? Which tell me this: this is what I want to know. When you're seeing that, this is the first time you see the the silver Bentley, right? Mm-hmm. I think, um, and then she, they save her. Um, Oh, well, you get mentioned at it. You mentioned it earlier when at the bar. Right. And then there's a save moment where, like, the car flips because of that car. Right. So in that moment, did you think they were the good people or the bad people? The For the Silver Bentley? Yeah. So the way I looked at it is uh, – I'm going to take a step back here for a little bit, uh, going back to that note from the dad. Um, you know, he's reading this note, says the words don't sound like his dad's, but his dad's telling him to meet him in Lovecraft country. Um, we, we keep hearing this name and you're like, okay, what the fuck is Lovecraft country? What is this? What, what's so special about this place? So this is what obviously spawns their road trip. They're going to go find the dad. They told they're told him to meet up here. So something's off. I mean, even the, even the, the brother, which is, or the uncle, which is the dad's brother. He was like. That's not my brother. My brother would never say anything like that. This does not sound like something my brother would write. Um, so they're, you know, and also Chris, the places that are on the map. Right. Yeah. It's it's like they're looking on the map everywhere, and they're trying to find it. They're like, we think it's around this area, but this area has been said to like have a lot of. You, you start hearing too as they're going that the area they're going to has a lot of disappearances for some reason. So they're trying to figure that mystery out as well. Um, so. Uh, yeah, that, like a lot of the family members are going like, like that place doesn't exist. I don't know what you're talking about, you know, and, and everything. So main, uh, obviously when, you know, um, our main character's in Chicago, he's just trying to piece together this riddle. He's like, okay, where the fuck did my dad go? He just disappeared. I just He's just coming back from the army. Um, and he's coming in from, I believe it was Florida. He was in Florida. He was stationed in Florida. So he's coming in. He's taking a bus from Florida. And he's coming back. He's trying to piece together this thing. Um, and we're trying to, and you know, we're trying to, you know, I, I like all the things that they show of all the places they go. They go to the Midwest, they go to, um, uh, Simmonsville, all these different place places leading to, of course, Lovecraft co- uh, country. Um, so when you go back to that silver Bentley, I mean, it's been, it was mentioned early on in the episode and then we're introduced to it again. And the girl kind of like gets out of the car and like kind of smugs at them as they're driving away. So to answer your question, did I think they were the good guys in the beginning? I think for me it was something more on the line was, okay, they're heading to Lovecraft Country. Obviously this girl has something to do with that because she's doing everything in her power to make sure they get there in one piece because someone in that group, and you do find out who it is, it's actually um, Atticus, uh, someone in that group is worth something, and they need that person to get there alive. So when I saw that scene, what interests me the most is uh, this show has a lot to do, and you see this more in episode two. It has a lot to do with more a lot of magic and, and witchcraft, um, and you see that with the car. When she pulls in front of the truck, the truck just flips over the car, and I'm like, what the fuck? What just happened? Um, so that was like a, a kind of clear, that cleared their path going forward. Now, when we get to the scene where they're pulled over by the cop into the forest, this is where it starts getting really intense. Um, because this also showed something that's going on to the world right now as well. Wait, I'm going to stop you here though. 
Um, the night before they go there, they stop at oh, what's her name's brother's house. Yeah, they stop it there, and there's like a lot of arguing mm-hmm. going on, and yeah, there's a whole art family issues. But he's basically said, "Hey, be careful of the sheriff, right? Because he runs a tight ship, right? And he don't take kindly to you, right? Um, I don't know proven. if the sheriff's killing people." Or if there's something in those woods that are killing people, but be careful, and right. you do not want to be there at sundown. At sundown, that's a big key thing for the end of the episode and episode two. Um, but I liked that the writers and the creators of the show actually touched on two things and then thing that's going on in the world right now. This is the show couldn't have come out at a better time, which was racism and police brutality. Um, and I don't want to get too much into like what's going on in the world, but in the show, we mm-hmm. see both of those happen when they get pulled over. Mm-hmm. Um, we see that the cop is giving them a hard time just for trying to map out where they're supposed to be going. You know, they're going into these woods, they're checking everything out, and the cop pulls up, just gives them a hard ass time. And the cop even tells them like, "I'm gonna give you to the railroad tracks. If you guys don't make it in a certain time, I'm taking you guys in. I'm gonna give you even a harder time." Yeah. yeah. Because he says, do you know what time sundown is? Yeah. And they're like, it's seven minutes from now. And do you know how far away the railroad tracks are? There's ten minutes this way. Or there's six minutes that way. Right. Which way are you going? Well, if you're going to make a U-turn, that's going to be illegal. Right. So. There's a whole, yeah, that scene right there, <laughs> if, if that didn't make you feel uncomffortable, I don't know what it did, because he makes him say some yeah. really inappropriate things that just make yeah. him feel uncomfortable. Um, yeah. And so he takes the U-turn, you know, he you know he gets permission from the cop to take the U-turn, and at the entire time, you know, they're trying to race out, the cop, like, eventually turns the corner and starts following them, eventually starts hitting them on purpose to just fuck with them, and we, we see that uh, right like, you know, the, the uncle's counting it down, and he's driving. He's trying to get as fast as he can, but to try, try to obey the speed limit, because if he doesn't obey the speed limit, the cop can't. He's yeah, he'll mess with him and get him for some bullshit like that. So the speed And they're going to be having trees. That's basically what he told them. Pretty much, yeah. So, you know, he's he's got to go 25, and the tracks are right there. And, the, you know, you, you're getting anticipated with them, because the cop's fucking with them. You know, Letty's in the back. She's got a gun ready if she needs it. And um, the uncle's counting down. For how long they have until to get past those railroad tracks. They fucking barely make it like within like a second of time left. But the minute they cross the state line, it looks like the cop called in for some backup on the other side of the state line because like four sheriffs are waiting for them on the other side. Um, and this is where the show gets really intense. Like this is where the show takes a an amazing turn. Now we did mention the whole sundown thing. And then we did mention how the brother was warning him about the forest. We don't know if it was the cops killing him. We don't know what it was killing him in these forests. But this is where we meet some interesting characters, and this is where we find out what happens after sundown in those forests. Um, so basically the cop pulls them over, takes them out of the car, harassing them and everything, takes them into the woods, was going to harass them further. And then something happens. We hear a weird noise. And then... What seen next shocked me. Like, I, I had heard that there were vampires in the show, but I never expected them to look like this. They, these vampire creatures pop out of nowhere and start killing the cops off one by one. Like, they kill two of them. The other two gets away. The other one's badly bitten. And, of course, everyone, uh, Uncle George gets knocked over by one of the cops, gets left behind. But the other two go to this, like, cabin in the woods thing. I, I wrote down, it kind of looked, it reminded me of Evil Dead. That's what the woods <laughs> My thought was Stranger Things. Stranger Things, Evil Dead. I mean, obviously you saw a lot of whoever, you know, producers, uh, writers, whoever wrote this show took a lot of inspiration from uh, past horror movies. So that was really cool to see nods to that. But they get into the um, the cabin. Uncle George, remind you, is still outside. And we, we see a big benefactor that helps them later on or that helps them later on in this scene. Um, and Sammy, tell them what happens when they get inside the cabin. So basically they get in the cabin – and they come to the fruition that light is what's going to save them. And Uncle George is coming, and they're like, you can't open that damn door, like, basically. And what helps the cops is they got guns still. No one else has guns. Right. 
Um, and so they basically come to the agreement of one of you is going to go get a car or something and save us. But it's not going to be either of you two. You're injured, George. We don't trust you. We'll send the woman. We're going to send Letty out. And Letty, yeah. you know, they're arguing about it. And Letty's like, you know what? Fuck it. I'll go. I just want to get out of here. Yeah. Um, and then Letty hauls ass through the woods. Now, I, I did say one of the cops was bitten. And this is what got me thinking. If they're vampires, from what I've known of vampire history, if you get bitten or get a blood transfer, anything to do with a vampire uh, to get their abilities, you turn. And I started noticing that if you pay attention, another missable detail in the very beginning of his transformation is the cop starts talking funny. You start hearing his voice get very deep uh, as he's starting to turn more and more. It really starts in the beginning because his voice was different when he got inside. And I noticed that, and I was like, something's happening with this cop, man. I think he's going to turn. I kept asking myself, I'm like, okay, so this is – obviously something's going to happen right now. This cop's been bit, and he's still alive. His voice is starting to change, um, and everything's happening. Uh, and eventually, what I thought was going to happen, happened. The cop does turn into a vampire. The vampires in these uh, – in this show are very different from what you've seen ever from a vampire. Um, I really like the way they shaped them. The best way I can describe them is that if you've ever played, like, Gears of War, um, there's these little, like, grunt kind of... Um, oh, yeah. It's, yeah, it's the structure. little grunt uh, locust uh, creatures. Think of that a little bit bigger and more eyes on their head. And, of course, their teeth yeah. are horrible. Like, they look gruesome. Um, yeah. So he ends up turning and um, freaking... Uh, Atticus says, you got to shoot this guy, man. Uh, well, before that, Uncle George actually quotes H.P. Lovecraft, or I don't know if it's H.P. Lovecraft, but he quotes uh, a line from Dracula, the book, basically saying, like, you know, what happens in Dracula, you know? Like, you get bit, you get turned. And they find out, of course, light's a big thing that's going to help them. So he gets bit, he gets turned. Uh, he's telling the other cop, you need to shoot this guy, dude, because he's going to kill us all. But the cop, of course, is being loyal to the other cop. Refuses to do it, ends up getting killed, um, and that's when you think it's all over for uh, Atticus and Uncle George. When out of the bloom, Letty comes coming in with the car, drives through the cabin, lights up that guy, hits him, and they're all saved. But that's not where it ends. Um, of course, they have the lights on and everything. They're getting Uncle George. Uncle George is really hurt at the point, so they put him in front of the the headlights. You know, everything's going good, you know, and then all of a sudden they realize that they're surround the whole cabin is surrounded by these vampires. There's more than you've seen like already like I think like three or four of them. And yeah. then you find out there's like a whole freaking herd of them. And so what they start doing is lighting up all these flares around the house because they brought in a bunch of flares. That was part of their kit that they brought for the car, which is another missable detail if you guys see early on in the show. They're going down this list of all the emergency stuff they need, you know, baggage, beds, uh, their roadside kit, flares, and all that. So it's a very missable detail if you didn't pay attention. Like, oh, shit, they got flares. They can do that. So they start lighting up all these flares. They put it down, and they're saved. And all of a sudden, when you think they're going to get killed, a whistle goes off and calls them away. Yeah. Uh, and at that point, uh, they end up making it to daylight. So they survived the entire night in that cabin. Uh, and daylight, they go and end up walking to that bridge to their destination, which is Lovecraft Country. Uh, it's a big mansion, beautiful home. Uh, they walk up to the door, all bloodied out, everything. Knock on the door. Before he can even knock on the door, the guy answers. He goes, we've been expecting you, uh, Mr. Freeman. Uh, come on in. Uh, we've been waiting for you. And that's how episode one ends. And I was yeah. like, that is a pretty normal, like, chilled reaction to someone who's got blood all over their fucking clothes like it's yeah. like he knew what happened so episode one was just you know it starts off like okay what's gonna happen and everything and then you start hearing mysteries and little details as to okay this is going on in this area what happens after sundown you start asking yourself all these questions and then you find out what happens after sundown uh and then that leads us into episode two so sammy how does episode two start 
Basically, um, life is but a dream for them in the beginning of episode two. Um, everyone's in sheer bliss. Um, Everyone except for uh, Atticus. Well, Atticus, yes. Um, we'll get to. I'll get to that. Yeah. You know, um, Uncle George is finding all of his favorite books. Letty's having clothes beyond compared. Atticus is just there. <laughs> He's just there thinking about what the fuck did we just see last night? Yeah, what the hell did I just see? Yeah. Um, and then uh, he's like, I need to find my dad, basically. And they're like, well, he's on business. He'll be back. Right. Eventually. And they're like, well, he's like, well, I, well, I want to see my dad. Like, That's what I came here for. He said he was here. He'll be back. Do you know when? This is all I know. Yeah. So that's and the, then that's the just, brother of the, of the girl we're going to introduce a little bit later. What well, if he's the brother? Yeah, he was confirmed to be the brother. Oh, was he? Yes. I thought he. I thought she said. I thought she had said later that she was a. He's a boy, and a friend sometimes. Oh, maybe boyfriend. I think that that guy's name is Crane. I'm not sure. I don't remember. Um, but he gives a tour of the house basically, and tells a great little tell about how. This is a replica. This is not the original home. Right. The original home belonged to. Another brace white, um, and it burned down. Right. Um, Going back to that whole first... White House story, by the way. Yeah, and only one person survives. Right. And I'm like, okay. And there's Atticus is still like, well, I want to know what the hell's going on around here. He's the, we'll, we'll really find out. He's the one that remembers anything. Right. Um, and he's like, so we go to the village. He's like, yes, you can go do whatever you want. Be back before dinner. That's the only thing I ask. Go do what you want. You can walk around wherever you want, do what you want, but you have to be here for dinner. Right. <laughs> when they're eating, he's like, well, let me go take you to lunch, basically. Let me take you to brunch or whatever. And they go to eat. And while they're eating, it's just them three, uh, George, Letty, and Atticus. And they're basically like, he's like, hey, dude. You guys remember what happened last night? And they're like, no, what do you mean? Like, I don't understand. That's where it got me right there. I was like, what the fuck? How do they not remember what happened last night? I would, <laughs> That shit would be betting in my brain for the rest of time. But then you find out why. Well, yeah. Um, but apparently that's something that happens a lot, though, with traumatic. Like, at least in Lovecraft's works, is that sometimes people won't remember things. Right. So that, was a little, little, that was a good little nod to Lovecraft. Yeah. Uh, something will happen. And only one person will remember the traumatic event. Um, and so they basically are like, okay, like we'll go, but like let's not be suspicious. Like and they're like, okay, let's go around. So they walk into the village and it's like a bunch of like poor white people and the estate that they're at is not poor white. You know what it gave it me like upper echelons. That village thing, you know what it actually gave me uh uh, it reminded me of that movie, The Village. You remember that movie, The Village? That uh, I don't know if you ever heard of it, but it was an M Night Shyamalan movie where they're all trapped into like a village and they all live in like that old style. Because you see a lot of those people dressed like in the old style kind of pilgrimage yeah. kind of thing where they're all yeah. dressed like that. So it reminded that scene reminded me that whole village reminded me of the movie, The Village. Huh. So I mean, there was, I guess I don't know if that was inspiration from that or if that's just what the the design they were going for. By the way, the the guy. Like the butler type guy uh, that they were talking with that brought him into the house, that took him to brunch. His name is William. William, okay. But okay, go ahead. So they basically go in the village, and um, they're realizing these people don't take too kindly to strangers either. Right. Um, and they encounter this woman with some dogs. Right. And those dogs are going crazy. And they're basically like... That girl's name is Del. Del, yeah. And they're like, Del, like, basically, like, what the heck is going on here? Like, is this where the prison is? Because you're the only place with stone. Right. Um, and that's where you're usually going to put your prisoners because stone don't burn. Yep. And um, it's going to, you know, it's a hard to get out of. Right. Um, and so they go there. She's basically not giving them the best treatment. Yeah. Until she basically finds out, oh, you're a guest of, you know, the estate. Then okay, then I'm gonna be a little bit nicer to you. Right. So they venture on there. They start to think. Uh, Atticus starts to think maybe my dad's there, like stowed away. 
um, because once again, it's the only stone building, and yeah, that was a, be... it was like a raw meat plant for them, right? Like that's where they kept all their raw meat. Yeah, that's where they they could uh, keep things away from the creatures, basically. Right. Um, and they're like basically like mm, okay, they kind of venture, and then they're returning back to the uh, manor, the manor, and it starts getting sundown. <laughs> Oh man! Real quick. Yeah, and I believe we are introduced to as well, um, Christina Braithwaite, who we saw in the first episode with the 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 car, and she yeah. basically warns them like just be in by sundown. She comes in, I think, on a horse, and basically tells them like, "Hey, just be in by sundown because shit gets crazy." And Dell also reminds them like, "Yeah, you, you want to listen to her? Be in by sundown because shit does get crazy." Yeah. Here. Do, hey, no, it wasn't just be in by sundown. It was. Don't be late to dinner. Right. Because that was his only stipulation. Right. Was venture as long as you want, go what you want, do what you want to do. Just do not be late for dinner. Right. And so they basically get caught in the sundown again, get to go fight those pig vampires again. Yeah, those are cool too. Um, uh, and then something then, interesting happens. Uh, then we get the whistle again. The whistle. You're like, okay, so where is this whistle coming from? Because it. Remind you, a lot of people are thinking, you know, uh, well, at least the characters are thinking, is that like a fucking dog whistle? What is this thing? Um, and this yeah. whistle you see that um, Christina has, she comes in and saves them. It, it can control the vampires somehow. Like, they back off. So it's like they have a control under these vampires of some sort. And Dell comes in with the dogs and tells them, like, you know, just come with me. Let's get you back to the house. Uh, pretty much no, well, no, no, no. It's very strict instructions. Atticus? You're going to meet my dad. Right. The other two of you, we're going to go put you back in your rooms. Right. For Which, very obvious reasons. Yes, and it's definitely something weird when we, we meet the dad, who is uh, – the dad's name is Titus Braithwaite, is uh, yeah, Titus. Christina's dad. Um, and, we, you know, we get an introduction to it. It looks like he just had a surgery of some sort, which comes full circle later on in the scene, but – He's had a surgery. He had something, a part of his body removed, um, and he gets he's getting stitched up and everything. And he shows him this painting. He goes, "This is my favorite painting by this art, uh, this uh, this artist." He starts going into detail, like you know, why do you think you're here and all that stuff. And he he's just trying to tell him, like, "Where the fuck's my dad, dude? Like, I'm here to get my. I, I, the reason why I came is because I'm I'm here for my dad. Like, where is he? Yeah. And he's giving a bunch of bold BS, like, you know, he's he's you know he's gone and everything. And like he's you know he'll be back soon. Just all the BS that he's been getting leading up to him being there. You know, and we start seeing this uh, unravel and we start, you know, we start seeing quotes from different things that, you know, that everybody should know. Is this where you find out that he's part of a bloodline, like a royal bloodline? No, this is where you basically find out he's he's pointing at the picture. Yeah. And throughout their home, they have various biblical images that we'll talk about. Yeah. But the one you this is the first one you really see is. Genesis 2, Adam naming all the creatures. Right. Um, and basically, he's very, uh, he's Adam at this point. It's putting the creatures in order of their hierarchy and putting them at their most prime form. Right. Where they're going to be their best and putting them in terms of hierarchy. And he wants to return to that base. That's what he says. Pretty much, yeah. He's trying to open the Garden of Eden. <laughs> yes, um, so we'll get to the Garden of Trying to do that later. Yeah, we're going to... Well, yeah, you'll, you'll, I mean, he mentions that briefly, right? The Garden of Eden. Yeah, because in the Garden of Eden, everything is perfect. Everything's perfect. It was before yeah. sin. Yeah. And prior to him naming the animals per him was that everything lived together equality. Right. With equality and equalness. But then Adam... Not just names the creatures, but puts them in order of hierarchy. Right. Who's going to be on the bottom? Who's going to be on the top? Yeah. So this is where we get them going back to the rooms. Is this where we see their illusions? Um. This is. I because I don't think they get. Because the, there's they the, get their illusions before or after he asks um, them to remember. No, it's before. I think this is yes, where they start to get their. So illusions. this is the illusions because after this they go to the dinner scene, which is men only. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, they start to get their illusions. But prior to that, um, 
Uncle George is begins like kind of exploring things. He's noticing the books on the wall open up secret doors, basically. Right. No, remember uh, Atticus asked Christina, why doesn't my friends remember anything? This is where he's starting to introduce more of that magic world. And he tells yeah. him, can you, like, unwipe their memories? And that's when you hear screaming in the rooms because they remember fucking everything. Yeah. So um, after that, you know, yeah, Uncle George, when he's got his memory back, he starts thinking about Lovecraft's, you know, stories and stuff of, of like, hidden rooms and all that. And he starts exploring different things and, and thinking he starts figuring out more of the house. Um, and he's starting to see all this, all these different things. And that's when we go to, of course, the uh, the scene where they're in their respective rooms and we get illusions. Now, this was interesting to me because there's obviously – it's like a cult kind of thing where it's like higher-up society where they're all invited to these dinners and all invited to like these meetings and stuff, and they, they talk about what's going to be happening. Um, so you're seeing all these different illusions. Now, you got Atticus in his room. Uh, yeah. He's just they have to because I'm going to be very specific on what they're seeing. Right. Each of them are just going to be seeing what they're most ashamed of in that moment. Right. And Atticus, uh, going back to episode one now, Atticus sees Jamie Chunk's character, who's named uh, Jaya, and yeah. so I guess he encountered her in the military. I believe killed, he killed her. her, and he's he ashamed of that. But for some reason, when he saw the alien in the very beginning of episode one, he saw the alien as her. So I wonder yeah. – now, this is a theory going forward in the show because it says she's slated for four episodes in this season. So th- we've only gotten two, so I'm assuming we're going to see her throughout the show or in the next two episodes, whenever. Um, yeah. So I'm assuming he maybe potentially could have had an affair with her or li- loved her or thought she was beautiful or something because he saw her as this alien that was, like, super beautiful in the very beginning. And, you know, they're hugging and stuff. And then when he goes to the illusion, you know, there's times, you know, the beginning they start fighting each other. He's stabbing her. He's like, you're trying to kill, you know, she's trying to kill him. And then there's a scene where they're about to like make love. And then all of a sudden they, she snaps out of it again and they start fighting again. Um, Yeah. So it ends with his uh, illusion. It ends with um, him choking her out and killing her. And then him on the floor kind of crying about that because, you know, that's something yeah. he was ashamed about in the, in the military. Um, Uncle George just has a dance with his wife. Uh, no, it's not his wife. That's not his wife. You're right. That was, not someone, his wife. that was someone he had an affair with, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, and she's, I think it's his childhood lover. Yeah, she's trying to tempt him to, like, think, like, oh, you believe in magic. You do, you know, all this stuff. She's trying to just get in his head. Yeah. Um, Uncle George, out of the three, was actually the smartest, in my opinion, because he knew right off the bat it was an illusion. He knew right off the bat that something wasn't right here. And even after they're done with their illusions, when they get in the hallway, he tells them, they're trying to fuck with our heads. Don't let them win. You can't let them win, because if they win, they have us, and they get what they want. Um, Well, that's the thing, though, is he's very much like, hey, I found out some stuff. This is too good to be true at this point. He's basically like, like, um... They're giving me what I want, but I'm most ashamed of. Right. Yeah, that's not not happening. Like, yeah. I would love to dance with this woman, and maybe I would have loved to fornicate with this woman, right. but that's not what I want anymore. Yeah. That's not what. That's like I'm the here. past, you know. It's like yeah, he's gotten over that. But I think Letty's was pretty like the most interesting because it kind of shows you how uh, she's felt about uh, Atticus in the past. And it brings it to fruition with like what's going on with them today. Um, you know, she, you know, Atticus comes in and she's freaking out. She just had remembered everything, so she's freaking out. Atticus comes in, and tries to calm her down, everything, and they're, you know, they're just talking and, and he's calming her down. All of a sudden, like they start, you know, you know, making out and everything, and they're about to like they're about to have sex and everything. And all of a sudden, like when he unzips his pants, a fucking snake like jumps out of his pants. And I'm, yeah, not, I'm not, and I'm not being like <laughs> metaphorical or anything. Like a legit fucking venomous snake jumps out of his pants and tries to bite her. Yeah, which is interesting because the room she at the room she's in has a painted window of Genesis three, basically. Right. Uh, the snake um, being sly, basically. Right. So and, um, you know, confusing the woman. It's funny that you bring that up now. It's something I'm going to probably have to go back and watch, but did each 
of their rooms have a painting that related to their illusion? That they to might the have. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. That might be a missable detail right there because if she had the painting on the window of that biblical story, what makes you think that maybe the other two rooms had something to do with their stories as well as to why yeah. they feel the way they feel? Uh, that's something that relates to the Bible. Um, of course, the Bible is a big uh, thing in this show from the first two episodes that we've seen so far. Um, but after all said and done, you see the the higher ups kind of looking at in their rooms, like in these kind of mirrors where they can't see them, but you know they can see them, and they're all kind of just enjoying it, like it's an everyday thing for them. Uh, it's like a yeah. museum of some sorts. Like you feel bad. You see Christina; she feels bad for um, Atticus, and you kind of see that throughout, like the first ep or the second episode. It's like she just feels bad for Atticus and feels bad for these people because he she knows that they don't want to be here. Well, I think the other part is. Regardless of what she does, right. she will never be good enough to be a part of that society. Right. Um, and so she knows how to be – she feels to be mistreated because no matter how much she does for her father, her father will never give her the same respect. Right. And so she kind of seeing like them toying with them and kind of like seeing that whole place thing because then the guy comes back, William, right? Right. The... It was basically like, hey, we have dinner tonight for you all still. Right. I told you that we're not going to miss dinner. We had something really big happening. And um, it's a black tie affair. No women. What about the scene, too? I think during that scene, uh, Christina gets called out to the, the village because the cow is going to give birth. You remember that? Yes. And yes, the cow gives birth to a vampire. And you're like, what the what? How? What? What's going on here? That that like kind of, yeah. I'm gonna keep that. Off. Yeah, I'm gonna keep that in mind for the future because I want to know where if there's got to be something where they're gonna tie back into that where they just didn't show that for nothing. Like that that's gonna come back somehow. Yeah, um, you don't waste 15 seconds for nothing. Right. Yeah, I think everything in this show is meant to be put in the show to either be referenced to later on in the series or uh, further the plot in that episode. Um, yeah. And she gives birth to the, the, the you know, the, the cow is on the floor. You think it's going to be an, a baby cow, but it ends up being a vampire. And, you know, the villager asks her, like, hey, have you ever done this before? And she's like, no, this is the first time I'm doing this. So I don't know if that was like an initiation of some sort, giving, you know, birthing, helping birth uh, a vampire. I don't know if that's part of their thing. I don't know yet. Yeah. Right? There's not really much explanation to that. Other than that brief uh, altercation we had with uh, her and the, the cow, which I thought was a very interesting scene to put in. So I'm, I'm going to keep my eye on that. That's something I'm definitely going to be uh, referencing back to if uh, it gets explained more in a future episode. So definitely something that viewers at home keep that in mind that she gave birth to a or she, you know, she helped birth a cow who, who had a vampire as a baby. So let's yeah. keep that in mind. But. We go to the dinner scene, and the dinner scene is very interesting, man. This is where it gets kind of really intense. Well, what's really interesting to me is we get there, right? And everyone's in black tire, right. except for Titus. Right. Titus comes in the the garb of the Brotherhood, basically. Right. Um, and they're all eating, and Uncle George is like, hey, I got something. Just go with it. Right. Um, so they're eating, and what do they get served? A part of his body. I think it was his liver, right? Yeah, it was his liver. Right. Uh, and that kind of gave me... Or it might have been... It might have been part of his rib. If they're going biblical... I think it's a part of his rib. If they're going biblical, this almost sounded like... And I know this is like the whole Garden of Eden thing happened before all this, but this reminded me so much of like The Last Supper in a way. Yeah, to eat of my body. Basically. Eat of my body, yeah, right? And, um, you know, because it's the night before they're going to do the whole portal to Garden of Eden and everything. So this is like a this is like a big step leading towards that. Um, so I, I, I love it, though. This scene was probably one of my favorites because I loved when um, Atticus and fucking Uncle George just snap out. Uncle George gives this amazing monologue. Atticus is there backing him up. And Atticus finds – Uncle George literally tells uh, them, like, Atticus is royal bloodline, and you got to listen to him. Yeah. And Atticus stands and Atticus up. is like, I am. Get out of my room. No. I'm sorry. i got to deliver this line because this is what he really said. He goes, so 
with me being Royal Budline, I'm ordering you, get the fuck out of the room. And I started busting up because I was like, yes, this is it. He's taking control, man. This is it. And he goes, that's when he's like, I, I don't think I made myself clear enough. He goes, I'm technically Royal Bloodline. You got to listen to the orders I give you. Get the hell out of the room, except for uh, Titus. You stay right there. And one yeah. guy kind of hesitates, throws his napkin down, and stands up and leaves because he is Royal Bloodline. They got to listen to him. Yeah, and, but he's black. Yeah, but he's black. So that was the <laughs> biggest problem was with that. A lot of people with that was, shit, do I take the order or do I not? But he's technically Royal Bloodline, so I have to listen to him. So everyone leaves the room, and he has a one-on-one -on -one with Titus letting him know, like, where the fuck's my dad? You got to tell me this. I'm Royal Bloodline. I'm ordering you to tell me where my dad is. And he basically tells him, I don't really follow that, so I don't got to tell you nothing. Yeah. And this is where the show gets really intense because I think they end up finding out where the dad is after this scene. Well, no, they don't. They just have a theory of, hey, I th they had already said, I think he's in there. Yeah. This is the only place they could keep him. Right. And basically, they go, okay, let's try. So like, go. They say, hey, you get the car, meaning um, their car they run up in. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's magically back to normal. Okay. Yeah, it's not destroyed back or anything. It looks beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Go get the car. We're going to go get him. Meet us there. Right. That's what they basically say. They get there, go down there, got it. Um, what's her name comes down the stairs and was like, you guys are animals and animals always fall into my Del, trap. Dell comes down. That's right. They go to that, that stone place back in the village that was storing all the raw meat. Uh, they go down there, they start looking and they're looking around and stuff. And then that's when uncle George finds out, Hey, there's a hidden room behind here. Like someone's been digging and the count of Monte Cristo is what he said. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and tell me this room didn't give you like fucking chills because you see all these bugs crawling around like. Fuck, man, if I had to crawl through yeah. this, I'd be freaking out. Yeah. Not to mention, early on in the show, we saw that fucking the vampires can dig underground, so, like, that was also a thought in my head, like, fuck, what are they going to encounter, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. And that is when we are introduced, finally, to Montrose Freeman. Well, before that, Del gets, ki Del gets killed, basically. Oh, yeah, Del gets <laughs> fucked up. That was great. She gets, like, a shovel thrown at her, right, or something like that, or she gets hit by a shovel. Yeah. Yeah, because Letty comes down the stairs and just beats her. Yeah. And it's like, we gotta go. Yeah. I got the car. And it's funny. They, they transition to that cave. And then, like, when they go outside at the cave, you see the dad's head stick up. And they're standing right there waiting for the dad. Like, we found you. Where you been? He goes, I never told you to come get me. Like, I, I could have got out of this myself. Why the hell are you here? And then, like, uh, Atticus is like, you wrote to me, dude. I came to you to help you and save you. Like, you wrote to me. He goes, I never wrote any damn letter to you. It's all them. And I was like, okay, that makes a lot of sense. That kind of answered that whole question. It's, they just yeah. kind of baited him because they needed Atticus because he was something special. Um, yeah. Which I thought was a hilarious thing. So then what ends up happening now is they're, you know, they're, they're getting in the car. They escape. They're all having, they're having a talk and everything, talking about how weird that fucking place was. They end up leaving the bridge. The bridge they came into, by the way. And as they're leaving, like, you think it's a, it's a clear getaway, and then, boom, they get hit by this invisible force field. The car is all fucked up. It's damaged. This was the part of this episode that shocked me the most. Because, like, the minute, you know, the, you know the, other, the, the silver car rolls up, it's Titus and Christina. And Titus comes out with a gun. I'm like, fucking someone's dying right now. Mm. Fucking Atticus gets out. Letty gets out. Uncle George gets out. The dad's right there, too. Fucking Letty gets out. Boom. Shoots Letty. I'm like, fuck, Letty's dead, and I actually like that character. She was badass. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. fuck, that sucks. That's early on in the series. Okay. Uh, and Atticus is freaking out over that. And then he basically tells him, you better choose between your dad or your uncle. I'm shooting one of them. Boom. Shoots Uncle George. I'm like, well, fuck, Uncle George is dead, and I liked him, too. He was a cool character. What the fuck? Yeah. And so, basically, they take him back to the house. Basically, like, if you don't come back, basically, Christina tells him, if you don't take part in this, I'm not going to save him. But if you take part in this, they'll be okay. I'll save one. I'll start healing one now. The other one's after. After the ceremony's done. After the ceremony. Yeah. yeah. So, when he's getting ready for the ceremony, 
you know, he's all, he's getting naked, they're washing him down, they put a robe on him and everything, they're like pretty much in a way purifying him, if you will, I guess that's yeah. actually how a lot of cults do it, um, and after that's done, uh, fucking Letty wakes up, gunshots gone and everything, Uncle George is still in bed, practically dying, and, uh, Montrose is right there next to his brother, just kind of aiding to him. Uh, so then the whole which there's a very interesting conversation that happens. Right. Go ahead and uh, go ahead and say it. So basically, what happens there is we don't know if Montrose is his dad. Right. Um, there's a whole conversation about like, hey, we don't talk about this. We agreed we're not talking about this. Right. So my thought, my theory, this is just a fan theory. Right is the woman that George saw in his vision mm-hmm. is Atticus's mom. And George and her slept together. Okay. And they had the baby. Well, because Montrez is a bro to George, Montrez says, I will claim to be his dad. So that way you don't re- ruin your relationship it's funny that with, you bring uh, that up because it makes a lot of sense now between the relationship of George and Atticus. Uh, with him, with Hippolyta, whatever her name is. Plus, it also makes sense because Hippolyta is a descendant, I think. Right. Of we see her, the, in, when they showed previous the throughout, the, throughout the show, we see a lot of her, like, fucking with shit and stuff. Like, for the first episode, when they showed previews for, like, the, what's going to happen the whole season, you see a lot of her in the, in the um, Hippocus. The, 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 the hip, wife, right? That George hip, is sleeping with. Yeah. 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 So I'm thinking she is a descendant of the Brass Whites. Right. Is that the girl that we saw at the end of two running out of the house? No, that's uh, that's the that's the slave that survives. Okay. Um. Yeah, and it's interesting. So he goes and does this whole. He opens the portal and stuff. There's like Tesla coils there. It looks like they're starting to shock, and they go through his body. His body opens up this portal. The flowers of Eden start coming through. But then something happens where he's wearing the ring that some black thing comes out and literally just turns things around, like just makes things go sideways. Um, yeah. Ends up fucking destroying the entire house, killing everyone inside. Uh, at least we think so far. We don't know what's going to happen in the next coming episodes, but everyone so far that we thought was inside that house is dead. Um, he runs out with that girl with the book. He, he thinks he recognizes her somehow. He's running towards her, and then she just disappears, right, when she's at the door. She has this, like, book with her, uh, and he runs out of the house. The house is just destroyed, uh, and that's when um, freaking Letty comes with the car. She's like, let's get out of here. But she doesn't look. She looks like to in her face that something's wrong, and he goes over, looks at George, and George did not make it. Yeah, there's one thing we didn't mention though, or so we think. And so we think. Um, Christine does say something very interesting. I think to um, Atticus right before the ceremony. Right. Is well, this is where you basically get to see her shame of like I will never be good enough. Right. Is. I want that ring that's about to, I'm placing on your finger, right. but I will never get that ring to be part of this whole society because I'm a woman. Right. But you did absolutely nothing but be born, and this is now yours. Right. Which I thought was, like, crazy. I was like, oh, damn. Like, for one time, like, the tables are turned on her because as a white woman, she was going to get everything she wanted. Right. You um, can't get the one thing he can because he's he's blood. I would say that this episode ended very sad because you saw the yeah. actual pain come out of Atticus when his uncle died. Because, like I said, the relationship between the two in this episode was like a father and son relationship. The yeah. uncle acted like a father more than uh, his own supposed dad ever did, you know, ever. And we saw that right when he got, you know, free and escaped. Like, I didn't call you. What are you doing here? And Uncle George was like, dude, he came here to fucking rescue you, and I joined him because I was worried about you too. Like, we yeah. came to fucking rescue you, dude. It's like, so it was a very emotional moment for me because you just felt bad for Atticus, man. Like, all the shit he yeah. went through leading up to that moment and his only pretty much, you know, father figure just passed away in front of him, you know? Or so we think. And the only reason I keep saying that is because I see he is slated for eight episodes this season. So, 
what's going to happen in the next episode? Are we going to see flashbacks of him? Are they going to somehow... Is Christina going to keep to her promise and bring him back? Because technically, technically saying he did do the ceremony. He did yeah. do it. And everything just went wrong, but he did do the ceremony. So we'll find out next. Next episode looks very promising. It looks like they're going to dive more deep into like a paranormal kind of episode where uh, they, I guess they inherit some fortune of some sort. Um, and uh, Letty buys this house and invites... Uh, that singer now is that her sister or is that like her friend or that was her sister that was her sister right yeah she invites it looks like she invites her to come live with her or i think it was her i believe it was her um and it looks like this house has a past to it that it's gonna start uh unveiling into like the paranormal side so this show is kind of going everywhere which i love it's blending horror with sci-fi um see episode two was heavily sci-fi based uh, with the whole yeah. portals and everything, episode one was very horror based. So it looks like it's gonna be like a pattern. It's like it's so far, it's looking like horror sci fi. The next episode is looking like it's gonna be horror. So let's see how this ends. I hope we get to see. Uh, here's my overall thoughts and what I want to see for the rest of the season is I hope we get to see more of Cthulhu because I love the idea and creature of Cthulhu and he looks so badass in that first five minutes. So I get. I hope we get to see more of Cthulhu. I hope we get to see more creatures like those vampires again. And I hope that we get to see more battles and shit. Like, I think that would be all out dope for this show. Yeah. Um, I'm just hoping to see good stuff, bro. That's all I want to see. Yeah. So I want to see stuff that blows my mind. Right. Because then it's already blown my mind. Right. And I just want to continue to see that. So uh, a couple ways you can watch this, by the way. you can uh, If you're subscribed to HBO on your cable provider, uh, you can watch this. We're not sponsored by them anyway. We just want people to watch this show because it's really fucking good. Yeah. Um, or yeah. if you have uh, another alternative, if you don't have cable or anything, HBO Max. Um, the same day they premiere, they literally put it on the, the streaming service as well. So I would say HBO Max would be your best way to watch this because uh, you, all you got to do is pay the 15 bucks a month and you can watch this show. Not to mention HBO Max offers so much great content. Yeah. It's just hard not to not subscribe to it. I'm watching that more than Netflix right now, honestly. So uh, I know this episode was long, but we were covering two episodes. Uh, I can promise you in the future, each episode will be anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes. Uh, just us really breaking it down in detail and some Easter eggs going forward, uh, thoughts and theories of the show, and then what we think going forward to the next show. I really liked how what we did here today, and I, I'm really excited to be doing this for the rest of the show. Uh, we already have like the first two shows planned out for the breakdown, so I'm like super excited for that. And I'm just happy to bring this uh, series back, honestly. I get to talk shows and movie horror shows and movies with my best friends, so that's, that's fun. Yeah. Um, but uh, Well... Hey, um, before we go, make sure you all uh, continue to follow us on social media. Um, you can hit us up on Twitter at Nights of Horror, on Instagram at The Nights of Horror. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you have some fan theories, put them down in the comments. We'll probably mention them in the next episode. episode. Um, put those comments down below um, and let us know what you thought of it. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll be here. We're going to continue on. And we'll, we'll see you all in the next episode next week. This has been the breakdown. The breakdown.